In my last video, we talked about the Lord of the Rings trilogy, widely accepted to be the greatest film trilogy ever made. It's Oscar award winning, influential, respected and loved by all. Ask anybody who's seen these movies in 9 times out of 10, they'll tell you that they love them. And honestly, there's only one thing wrong with these movies. They're owned by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers was like, damn, that property we own that's loved and respected by all? Let's fuck it up and try to make some more money. And obviously they were trying to make a Hobbit movie work for years. They even had Guillermo del Toro signed on to direct it. Honestly, a perfect choice. And really, it seems like it's a pretty good idea so far. I mean, it's the prequel to the series, right? But then, del Toro dropped out. But now Peter Jackson is back to take over. And he, he did a good job the first time. But then, the greed set in. The powers that be wanted to recapture the magic of the original trilogy. And how did they want to do this? Well, not by giving the director extensive time and resources to create their vision. No, they decided to force it to be a trilogy. Why they go and do that? Now, in case you didn't know, The Hobbit is a single book. And it's not very long, and it isn't particularly complex. And when I heard this would be multiple movies, I was very confused, because unlike the original trilogy, I've actually read The Hobbit, and I love it. It's a lovely little character study, and Bilbo Baggins is one of my favorite fictional characters. But one thing that I think everybody can agree on is that this book doesn't really fit into a trilogy. Maybe you can make it work in two movies, but three is insane. So how do you fill up that much time with so little material? Well, I'll tell you how. You make shit up. For comparison, the first Dune book is about 188,000 words. And that story fits pretty well into two movies. I know the second one isn't out yet, but having read the book, it's a safe bet on what's gonna be in it. In comparison, The Hobbit is 95,000 words, and they decided to make it into three movies. This is even funnier when you consider the fact that Fellowship is about double that, and it only needed one movie. So when people say, well, The Hobbit was, you know, it's got too much going on, it needs more than one movie, I disagree. Because there's already an animated Hobbit movie, and it's actually pretty good. It's way better than the animated Lord of the Rings movie, and it does a decent job of fitting everything into 90 minutes. That's all killer, no filler. If they gave Peter Jackson three hours and one movie, I really think he would have done just fine. But no, one movie wasn't enough. We want to recapture the magic of the Oscar award winning trilogy. And the resulting films are, well, let's just say, they're certainly different. This is the most obnoxious thing I've ever experienced in my life. Many people say when you watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy for the first time, it feels like they get better and better with each movie. I would say the Hobbit movies are the opposite. They kind of feel like they get a little worse. They start off fine, but by the end, the story is completely made up of needless bullshit. The movies are so bloated because they had to just make up a bunch of new shit to make it a trilogy. So let's dive right in and see how shameless these movies truly are. So this movie stars Martin Freeman as Bilbo Baggins, a normal dude who just wants to get high and eat muffins all day. And then a mysterious wizard shows up at his house and says, hey, I need you to come with me. You're gonna go with these dwarves to kick a dragon out of their house. And Bilbo's like, I don't really wanna do that, but he does it anyway. And that's basically the plot of The Hobbit. It's very simple. And for what it's worth, this first movie isn't really that bad because it kind of just sticks to the book, at least for the most part. And it does have a lot of issues, but those issues become more prevalent later. So firstly, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna talk about what I like. And the number one thing is Bilbo. The Hobbit. Martin Freeman is perfect as a younger Bilbo. He encapsulates the character so well. I love all of his regular dude mannerisms. And even when these movies are at their lowest point, if Bilbo has a scene, it's usually the best scene in the movie. Because this is like the premier fish out of water story. It's about a normal guy in abnormal circumstances. And Martin Freeman has been playing that role for his whole career. So honestly, he makes for a perfect Bilbo. And the best scenes in the Hobbit book are the ones where Bilbo is alone and has to solve a problem. And the best parts of these movies are those very same moments. Bilbo's game with Gollum is the best scene in this movie. It's just two solid performances bouncing off of each other. And now the problem lies in the fact that outside of this movie, Bilbo is not really the main character of the trilogy. 
And the thing is, Bilbo's entire character arc from the book, where he learns not to be a stick in the mud, and he learns to take in the adventure and become a little hero, it's all just in this first movie. For some reason, the story speedruns his development, and by the end of the first movie, he is done with his entire character arc. So for two sequels, Bilbo is just kind of there, hanging out with dwarves that definitely don't have any development of their own. Yeah, I should probably talk about all the dwarves. Accompanying Bilbo on his quest are 13 dwarves who want to reclaim their mountain home from the evil dragon. And while, let's say, calling them characters is, well, let's say it's a little dishonest. And you might think, well, how the hell are you supposed to characterize 13 dwarves? And I mean, it's actually not hard to do. You're telling me that in three movies, it's too hard to characterize 13 dwarves? In the original trilogy, we have nine main characters. That's not that far off from 13. We don't need full character arcs for all of them. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Legolas doesn't have much of a character arc, but he's still a beloved character. Alternatively, I have no idea what this guy's name is. I don't know his personality or his character traits, and he's in all three movies. And I don't expect every dwarf to matter right away, but across three movies, I at least expect to feel something when they start getting killed off. And in the original book, knowing that there's 13 dwarves doesn't really distract you because you can't see them on screen. In a movie, it's way more distracting when every scene has me thinking, who the fuck is that guy? Like, honestly, tell me what this dwarf's name is. I'll give you five seconds. His name is Bofer. Bofordy's nut! And this is a personal gripe, but some of the dwarves don't look like dwarves, and I don't like that. Dwarves need big old beards. It's the worst with Thorin. I get it. They wanted to make him look like Aragorn. They want him to be sexy. I don't care. I don't like it. He needs more beard. I don't look at this guy and see the leader of the dwarves. I see a sexy fantasy hero man. Like, look at this and tell me which one of these two characters is a dwarf. It's this one, the regular guy. But anyway, the beginning of this movie tries to do the same thing that the previous Lord of the Rings films do. He wants to start with some background, set the tone, and it does it very badly. I commended Fellowship for packing a lot of exposition into a well-cut montage. I really appreciate brevity. But in this, it's just an extended flashback. And honestly, this is all stuff that could have been told to us naturally over the course of the movie. This movie covers less information in a clunkier way. The intro to Fellowship is eight minutes. The intro to The Hobbit is 15 minutes. So yeah, not really the best start. It's a little disappointing considering how much I love the opening scenes from the previous trilogy. And another thing that comes with the territory of any prequel is that the movie loves to remind you of things that you may remember from the other movies. Remember when Gandalf used his spooky voice at a thematically appropriate moment? Well now, he just does it again. And no, it's not thematically appropriate, he's just doing it because you remember he did it in the other movie. And remember the soundtrack from those movies? Well, they're mostly reused here. There aren't really that many new compositions, and it's a shame because the few that were made specifically for this movie are really good. Like, the dwarf theme song is one of the best and most fitting themes in the whole series. But other than that and a few other compositions, we gotta use music that people remember. Thorin is about to make an epic last stand. Well, let's just throw in the Ring Wraith song. The song about evil ghosts. You know, this song has lyrics, right? And the lyrics don't match, and the special effects really are a shadow of their former glory. To start off, everything is green screen now. Even them riding horses outside is green screen. There's also that infamous story about Ian McKellen breaking down in tears on set because he was forced to perform all alone in this green prison. <sighs> It was so distressing and off-putting and difficult that I thought, I don't want to make this film if this is what I'm going to have to do. And for some reason, everything has this weird, glossy glow, and it kind of makes everything look cheap. It's especially bad when they bring in one of the actors from the other movies, and they have to add this Snapchat filter over their faces to soften their wrinkles. Look how weird Frodo looks. And don't you worry, we get to see this very same effect in every movie. 
Really, the most disappointing aspect of the effects is that the production team did not have access to the mountains of props and practical assets. Again, I don't want to blame PJ for everything. He just didn't have the resources to make this trilogy the same way he did before. So now, they just have to rely on CGI. And it's such a bummer. The orcs look so good in the original trilogy. Every one of them looks so unique. And now, they're all CGI. And you gotta look at the orcs for a long time because they are really pushed into this narrative. Because in the Hobbit book, the orcs aren't really that big of a deal. They're just one of many temporary roadblocks for the group. But hey, we gotta add conflict. And again, I'm gonna get more into that in the next movie because as much as I'm bitching, a lot of these problems don't become big problems until the next one. The positive aspects of this film do make it easier to ignore these things. And there are a lot of positive aspects. At this point in the trilogy, there isn't a ton of made up original content. A lot of what happens is stuff that happened in the book. And that's usually when these movies are good. I mean, a lot of the dialogue from the opening scenes are just straight up lifted from the books. This movie has a lot of nice moments with Gandalf and Bilbo as well, who I think are probably the strongest characters in the trilogy. A lot of the childlike adventure that you'd expect from The Hobbit is present here. For the most part, this movie does have a much lighter tone than the rest of The Lord of the Rings, and I love that they actually sing the songs, further adding to the storybook vibe, and I like that the action is fun and inventive. I really appreciate that the dwarves don't fight like any other characters that we've seen before. They have their own little style. For instance, the Fellowship members each fight in a way that's very specific to each individual. Gimli just smashes through his enemies like a barbarian, because that makes sense for him. Aragorn is like a man at arms, he can fight with like anything. He uses a lot of improvised weapons, showing that you can give him anything to fight with and he's equally dangerous. And then we have Legolas, who's a fucking anime character. But the dwarves all fight with each other, they throw weapons to each other, they do little combos, it's like a fucking fighting game, it's very creative. And most importantly, it suits them. We see this as early on as the scene where they're doing the dishes. The fact that they do chores in the same way that they kill monsters, that's very smart, it's a good detail. I really wish this wasn't the only way we saw their character shine through, but I'll take it. This movie also has a lot of creative visuals. I like the transition between old Bilbo and young Bilbo, and I really like how the logo has a little smoke ring behind it, emulating the one ring. There are also a few narrative choices that I think work a little better here. I like that Bilbo has the chance to decide if he wants to go on the adventure or not. He has to make the active choice, and I think that's a lot better for his character arc. I also like that they make a point to show that Bilbo really likes hanging out with the elves. And he doesn't need to say out loud, boy, I love it here. You can just tell by looking at him in these short scenes where he's just vibing. And it makes sense because later in his life, Bilbo does go on to live with the elves. Little details like this didn't need to be added, but they make the overall picture a little better. I also like the Goblin song. Down, down, down in Goblin Town. Down, down, down in I think Goblins should be in every movie. So yeah, this is definitely the easiest Hobbit movie to enjoy because a lot of the things that people hate about these movies are either not a big deal yet, or they just haven't been added yet. To me, this is the only time that any of these movies feel like they're a part of the Lord of the Rings franchise. So I'm gonna give this one an okay out of 10. Let's get to the real shit now. I think I hate this movie. I don't know what it is. Maybe I was in a bad mood, but watching this movie made me cranky. Any hope I may have had for this trilogy has completely been washed away. If you ask me, this is where these movies really start to show their true colors, because like I said, the last movie already covered Bilbo's entire character arc. And unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of ground for this story to cover. Being the middle chunk of the book, this movie only has a few story beats to adapt. And the only things that happen in this part of the book are the following. The dwarves get captured by spiders, the dwarves get arrested by elves, and the dwarves go to the mountain. That's it. We don't even kill Smog in this movie. We just need to meet him. Now that's not a lot of stuff for a story. So this is where PJ and the team really started making shit up. In the last movie, they really only added the new orc bad guy and a few other details, but that's not enough. We need more OC. In the original story, Gandalf leaves the group periodically on the adventure because he's a wizard and he's mysterious and he's got shit to do. He's also way too strong, so he'd solve their problems a little too quickly. But hey, we need content for the movie, so let's ruin the mystery and just see what he was doing. So in this movie, he's hunting the Necromancer, who's secretly Sauron. Yeah, Sauron isn't a fucking thing in The Hobbit, and there's a number of reasons why this doesn't work for me. 
First of all, The Hobbit is not Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit is a silly, goofy bedtime fairy tale. The Hobbit is basically a collection of bedtime stories that Tolkien would tell his kids. And it does read like that. This is the tale of how Bilbo saved the dwarves from the trolls. This is how Bilbo saved the dwarves from the spiders. This is how Bilbo saved the dwarves from prison. But Papa, can the dwarves do anything on their own? No. And Tolkien didn't really have the Lord of the Rings fully ironed out when he wrote The Hobbit. The One Ring was just a cool magic ring that Bilbo found. And later he retconned it and made it way more important. And that works, but when you read the book, it's just kind of a ring. They don't talk about how it's literally the most evil thing ever made. They don't talk about the Dark Lord that created it. That would ruin the vibe, because this is a fun bedtime fairy tale. But you have other prizes. The ring? Oh, yes. I'll keep it as a souvenir in a glass box on the mantel. <laughs> so here's the issue. Unfortunately, we made the epic, dark, bloody, violent, heart-wrenching fantasy trilogy before we made the predecessor. So instead of committing to making The Hobbit, they tried to just turn The Hobbit into Lord of the Rings. We need it to be a trilogy, and we need world-ending threats. This trilogy is constantly trying to balance the childlike fantasy whimsy of the book with shit like this. You might think this is a small-scale adventure. The dwarves and Bilbo go to the mountain to stop the dragon and get their home back, but no. Now, in this trilogy, this is one of the most important things that's ever happened. And for that reason, Sauron needs to get involved. He's just here because, well, Sauron's the bad guy in Lord of the Rings. And this is the Lord of the Rings prequel. Oh shit, hold on. The executives gave us notes. They said we need even more characters. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we have 13 dwarves. Can we give some of them character? No? Uh, okay. Uh, Legolas is here now. People like Legolas, right? I mean, I guess people like Legolas, but here's my hot take for this video. I think he's the worst Fellowship member out of all of the movies. He's easily the least compelling of all of them. He barely has any lines. He kind of just sits around making the same face. Like, bro, you are literally about to die. Could you pretend to care? And I've heard he's better in the books. And that's cool. It's fine. But I don't read books for nerds. I read books for grown-ups. And I give Orlando Bloom a pass on this trilogy because he was a kid, and this was his first gig, and I've seen him do better. But he is not better in The Hobbit. He's really fucking bland. I wouldn't even say it's fully his fault. They didn't really give him anything to do other than fight. And uh, we also got to throw some CGI on his face, because it's been like a decade since we've seen this guy. Why are you fucking here, man? You're so old. Where's your wife? Go home to your family, dude. Oh, hold on. Warner said we need more new characters. I mean, again, we have 13 fucking dwarves. Okay, fine, whatever. Kate from Lost is here now. She's an all new original character. Her name is Toriel. And you know what? Fine. The Hobbit has literally zero women in this story. It's kind of a sausage fest. I'm not even fully against adding someone new. But you may wonder what her role in the story may be. No, you won't. You will never wonder that because from her first scene, you know that she is here to be a dwarf's love interest. It is immediately apparent that she is just here to be in a love triangle. And you know, when I read The Hobbit, I thought to myself, this is pretty good, but it really needs a love triangle. I could have anything down my trousers. Or nothing. That was a dick joke in The Lord of the Rings. Just imagine Tolkien reading that part to his kids. And really the worst thing about this movie is that it's just boring. At least the last movie wasn't dull. This movie is like unbearable, especially if you're watching the extended cut. If you're wondering, the extended cut adds extra scenes for the human characters, like the mayor and Alfred. Who's Alfred? Oh, don't worry. We'll get to Alfred later. The only time this movie tries to ward away our boredom is in the infamous barrel sequence. Now, the biggest problem with the action scenes in this trilogy is that they kind of just don't know when to quit. I liked the goblin escape from the last movie at first. But after a while, it just keeps going and it keeps getting more outlandish and it gets to the point where it doesn't even feel like a movie anymore. It feels like a set piece from an Uncharted game. And the major set piece in this movie is the barrel scene. In the book, Bilbo and the dwarves ride barrels down the river to escape the elves. And that's it. But in this movie, no, 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 that's not enough. So now we have to have the orcs show up and try to kill the dwarves. And we also have the elves show up and they want to stop the dwarves, but they also hate orcs a little bit more. So it's just a clusterfuck of people fighting each other. And then for some reason, there's like shitty GoPro footage 
It's like we're on Splash Mountain. And really the most distracting thing about these action sequences is that your suspension of disbelief is just completely destroyed. The characters in this movie are immortal. They survive the most insane shit. And as a result, there's rarely ever any tension in this movie. And that's kind of one of the biggest problems about prequels. We know Legolas isn't gonna die. We know Bilbo isn't gonna die. And that's not to say you can't have tension in a movie where we know the outcome. We all know that Gollum isn't gonna eat Bilbo, but that doesn't mean that that scene isn't intense because the scene is well written. It was written by someone who knows what he's fucking doing. So the longer you draw out these scenes where the characters are never in any peril and they never take any damage, it just kind of makes me not care. Why would I give a shit if they're never met with any sort of roadblock? And after this, we get a long stretch of very boring plot. I was actually really surprised to see how much movie is left at this point because nothing happens in this part of the movie. But hey, we gotta stretch everything out past two hours. And yes, I do think it's a very good idea to make Bard a real character because he's ultimately gonna be the guy who kills the dragon. It doesn't hurt to give him something more to do in this movie, but I don't really need to devote more screen time to seeing his family drama. I don't need to see his rivalry with the mayor, and I don't need to see pointless shenanigans with the mayor and his manservant, again, we will get to him later. But after all that shit, Bilbo and the dwarves finally fucking go to the mountain and we can get our one scene that's mostly good, Bilbo and Smaug. Much like the last movie, the best scene is the one that they lifted directly from the book where Bilbo talks to a monster. It's more or less the same exact scene from the book and because of that, it stands out as being good. I do think it's hilarious just how into this role Benedict Cumberbatch was. They had my man in a mocap suit grinding his coochie on the ground. It looks hilarious, but I gotta give him props. He is giving 200% effort to playing a dragon. I gotta respect that. It's kind of interesting because this footage let the effects team create a pretty good model for Smog in this scene. But I think that this was the only scene they had that mocap for. Because later in the movie, for some reason, Smog just kind of looks like shit. Like, look at this shot. This is straight up unfinished CGI. At his worst, he looks like the dragon from Merlin. And as good as this scene with Smog and Bilbo is, scenes like this remind me that we don't really spend a lot of time with Smog in this trilogy. And stretching him out into the next movie where all he has to do is die, it's just kind of weird and anticlimactic. They had Doctor Strange grinding his cock and balls against the floor for this. We can devote more screen time to Alfred and the mayor, but we can't give Smog a little more to work with? Again, this should have just been two movies. You can just have Smog be a small but effective footnote in a larger story. Because with all this padding, the climax of this movie is just a bunch of scenes that were made up because there's no climax in this part of the story. There is no epic Battle of Helm's Deep. So the final conflict of the movie is this. The dwarves decide to confront Smog, which they don't do in the book, but you know what? I get it. Make the main characters confront the enemy. It's fine. I can accept this. However, their master plan involves dowsing Smog in molten gold. And it's just another one of those extended action video game sequences where our characters are immortal and can pull off insane feats. The fact that Smog can't kill a handful of dwarves makes him seem much less intimidating. Also, this looks like shit, but don't worry because this isn't the only conflict we have in the climax. While all of that is happening, we have Feely, Keely, Oin, and Bofer, these nuts, in Lake Town, even though they aren't supposed to be there. They're here because earlier, Keely got a wound from a Morgul arrow. Yes, the fucking evil enchanted metal that makes Frodo almost die and turn into a ringwraith. The stuff that the elite ghoul king uses. Now we are just giving it to normal orcs. So the regular orc shot Keeley, and now he's dying. So Sauron sends orcs to go finish off the dwarves because he thinks Thorin and the dwarves are in Lake Town. Now, first of all, I just have to say, I don't know why Sauron has beef with a couple of fucking dwarves, I feel like he'd have bigger shit on his mind. And even though the mountain that Thorne's company wants to get to is right next to Lake Town, and logically, it's the next place the dwarves would want to go, that is not where the bad guys look. Oh, and also, Legolas and Toriel show up to help. 
So now the dwarves that aren't supposed to be here have to fight off the orcs that aren't supposed to be here with help from a guy who isn't even in this book and a woman who was made up for this story solely so one of the dwarves could have a hot elf girlfriend and the elves that aren't supposed to be here have to heal the dwarf that isn't supposed to be here because he has a magic evil wound that he shouldn't have because the bad guys who weren't supposed to be here had evil magic weapons that they weren't supposed to be given by the bad guy who isn't even in this story. Oh, and uh, also, who the fuck is that guy? And it would be one thing if any of this made up content was interesting, but it's not. In the last video, I didn't really complain about the changes they made in the movies because the changes made for a better overall picture. I don't care about changes. I care when the changes are made out of desperation to add artificial conflict and bring in characters purely for fan service and to stretch out a movie way past its runtime. These changes aren't done in service of a better story. They are done to make the movie longer. Legolas and Sauron being in this trilogy adds nothing to the story of Bilbo Baggins, The Hobbit. I don't even think Bilbo meets Legolas. And this movie really made me realize just how shit this trilogy is. It doesn't feel anything like the source material and it doesn't even feel like it belongs with the overall series. In my last video, I spent a lot of time praising the simple and effective aspects of storytelling in the original trilogy. And it's because of stuff like this, it's clearly not easy to pace a three hour movie appropriately. Even the guy who did it well three times in a row can't keep it up under these circumstances. So yeah, this movie stinks, I don't like it, and I don't think I'll ever watch it again. So I'm gonna give it a bad out of 10. Let's see if things can get any worse. So at last, we are at the final film, the last Lord of the Rings movie we've ever gotten. And honestly, it's just about as bad as the last one. I've actually never seen this movie up until I made this video. I was not convinced that it would be worth my time, so I have not watched it until today. And I couldn't even rent this movie. I had to fucking buy it. I own this now. Wait a minute. Rated R? For kids? Now, if I said the last movie doesn't have a lot of things to adapt, this is the one where they really took it too far. Because the entirety of this section of the book is just Smog dying immediately, and then Bilbo sleeping through the final battle. So like, how do you make that into a movie? This movie basically exists to resolve all of the threads of made up bullshit that they've laid out. So to start things off, Smog dies right before the title drops. And now the dwarves got their mountain back. That's so nice, but everybody's kind of mad about it. So now they have to have a battle for an entire movie. So here are the main players. The five armies are as follows. Army number one, the dwarves and Bilbo. Like I said, Bilbo's kind of not supposed to really be a factor in this battle. In the book, Tolkien makes a point to show that this whole conflict is stupid. I simply do not understand war. And yeah, Bilbo doesn't sleep through the whole thing, but he really doesn't have much to do in this movie. There's a certain point in this movie where I forgot Bilbo was in it. I just want to remind you real quick, in case you don't know, that this movie is called The Hobbit. Now with the dragon slain, the dwarves are finally finished with their quest. They got their home back. Isn't that nice? No, it's not nice because now Thorin is infected with something called dragon sickness. Ocean madness. He loves his gold and he wants it all for himself, but everybody else wants the gold too. It's the Middle Earth gold rush, baby. See, you remember how the corrupting influence of the ring was shown to us naturally over the course of the other trilogy? Yeah, fuck that. Let's invent a fucking made-up fantasy disease that makes him act crazy and kind of gay? Okay, fine. You win with your gay stuff. That's what you want, right? To win. And none of the dwarves are really happy about this. Nobody here is having a good time. And... Wait. Why is... Bilbo... taller than him? <laughs> Huh? Army number two is the elves, who have this ancient beef with the dwarves. Lee Pace is the king of the elves, and he wants this gay little necklace that Thorin has. And Thorin's like, hey, it's my necklace, you can't have it. So now the elves want to do a war. Disclaimer, this necklace is only shown and talked about once in this movie, and then we never hear about it or see it ever again. And along with the elves, we have the stupid fucking love triangle between the elf that isn't in this story, Keeley the dwarf, and another elf, 
that isn't supposed to be here. Keeley just professed his love to Toriel after knowing her for like a day. I think it's been like a day. But he tells her he loves her and he gives her a precious gift. It's a rock! A rock! And that's not good because Legolas is in love with her too because, uh, because he... Army number three is the CGI orcs. The big bad white orc has this ongoing grudge match with Thorin and the other one has beef with Legolas because they like fought in the last movie or something. I don't know. They just really need stuff for Legolas to do. I don't know what to tell you. They want in on the battle too and they're being told to do this by Sauron who again, I can't stress this enough. Why is he here? Don't you have shit to do? Army number four is the humans. They just got their town fucking wrecked by Smaug, so Bard goes up to Thorin and he's like, hey, Thorin, since you woke up the dragon and you ruined our home, could we have like a little bit of cash? And Bilbo is like, yeah, Thorin, we did make a deal with them. How about we give our good friend some money? And Thorin's like, fuck that nigga. So yeah, this subplot would have been fine. It makes the most sense. Bard did go out of his way to help the dwarves, and now Thorin's being a fucking dick. So of course they'd be mad at them. This mostly makes perfect sense. Except for some reason, the human storyline is tainted by fucking Alfred. He's like some comic relief Grima worm tongue. He's the most annoying fucking character out of all of the movies in the entire series. He's not funny. He's not interesting. He has more lines than a majority of the fucking dwarves. And his inclusion in the story makes no sense. He doesn't do anything in the story. He doesn't teach anybody a lesson. He doesn't affect the plot. He just acts like a fucking moron. He soaks up all the screen time and then he dies. <laughs> and those are all the armies, all four, four of them. Uh, wait a minute. I mean, in the book, the wolves are the fifth army, but there aren't any wolves in this. Oh wait, there's a second orc army too. There's like the main one and there's another one that never really joins the battle. So is that the fifth army? They didn't really battle. So are they part of the battle of the five armies? Oh wait, now the eagles are here too and they deal with those other orcs. Are they the fifth army or the sixth army? So depending on how you slice it, this is either the battle of the four, five or six armies. One of the biggest problems with this movie is that the Battle of the Five Armies is stupid. It's a stupid battle that happens for a stupid reason, and even Tolkien admits as much. Hence why it is only covered for a few pages in the book. Bilbo is not even conscious for it. And in this movie, it is the longest on-screen Lord of the Rings battle out of all of the movies. It condenses everything that made all of the battles in the original trilogy memorable, and it throws all that shit in the trash. This is basically just a CGI football game. Tolkien despised war, and he wrote the story to reflect that. And I actually like how the animated Hobbit movie handles it. Bilbo is just like, wow, this is stupid. I'm sitting this shit out. And this movie has many moments where the characters are like, wow, this whole conflict is really stupid but they still spend two hours on mindless video game action. And I'm sorry, but you can't have an entire fantasy action movie be about an event that all of the characters admit is stupid and pointless. The movie's actively telling you not to care. And I mean it when I say it's a fucking video game. Like right at the beginning of the movie, Gandalf got kidnapped by Sauron and he got put in a birdcage. But it's okay because the fucking Avengers show up and save him and they have this insane battle with these Dark Souls enemies. And I think this scene is what finally broke me. The way it's framed to be so badass and epic with Elrond getting this action movie one-liner. You should have stayed dead. And the CGI ghosts just looks so bad. I I just, I don't know. See, to me, I thought I was gonna get a Hobbit movie. And when I got to this scene, I realized this is no longer an adaptation of The Hobbit. This is something completely different. And I complained before about my suspension of disbelief, but this movie takes it to another level. For instance, Bard escapes from prison in the beginning of this movie by taking a rope dangling outside the window because his prison is conveniently located above the lake 
He then ties the rope to the mayor who just so happens to be passing underneath. And the mayor didn't notice because he also just so happened to be pushing Alfred off of the boat at this exact moment. Then he dangles for a second before getting caught against the boat. And I guess the speed of the boat and the sheer girth of the mayor allow for the entire wall to be pulled off. Like, what? And then we have the most infamous scene of them all, where Legolas has to get to Toriel before she gets killed. But he's all the way up in this tower. So right before Toriel is struck with the killing blow, he hops off of the tower, stabs a troll in the head, which then, in its death throes, knocks over the tower, which topples perfectly in place to create a bridge that Legolas can use to go save her. And then they fight on the bridge, which crumbles, and then we get this beautiful moment. I need help reacting to something. This is officially too far. This is a fucking video game. If something crazy happened once or twice, I wouldn't really fixate on it because don't get me wrong, Lord of the Rings can be over the top, but it's usually done within reason. In the original trilogy, Legolas is the only guy who does the crazy stuff. And even then, the craziest thing that he does is played off comedically because even the movie knows it's insane. But in this trilogy, everybody is a fucking superhero. The death-defying stunts are bountiful. And for some reason, it feels like every character gets a heroic moment to save someone from being killed. Toriel is about to be killed. Oh no, but it's okay. Legolas is here to save her. And right after that, Thorin's about to be killed. Oh no, but it's okay because Legolas saves him. And Bard's kids are about to be killed, oh no! But it's okay, because Bard shows up to save them. And Toriel is about to be killed again, oh no! But it's okay, because Keeley shows up to save her. And like, dude, this is just artificial tension. I'm not stupid. You've done this same scene like five times. It's just two hours of mind-numbing action. There's no rise and fall in the pacing, it's just a straight line. The only reason I'd say this isn't the worst one in the trilogy is because I could not stop laughing. I legitimately had my jaw on the floor for some of these scenes. And yes, this trilogy is very disappointing, but if you compare it to, say, the Star Wars prequels, I don't think they ever really get to that level. Being the worst Lord of the Rings movie still puts them higher than a lot of other bad movies I've watched on this channel. The stuff with Bilbo is always great, and the performances are actually not that bad. Like, even when the script is shit, the actors are all working their asses off. Though I do mean it when I say the script is bad. There are some lines that nobody could save. Why does it hurt so much? Because it was real. And I really like this one little scene where Bilbo and Gandalf are just chilling after the battle's over. And if you ask me, there needed to be a lot more scenes like this, because I've been saying this a lot, and you can call me old-fashioned, but I think the Hobbit movies should have been about the fucking Hobbit. It is truly the biggest failure of this trilogy. I don't care how much shit you make up. If Bilbo was more involved, I probably would accept it. I understand wanting to make the Hobbit movies connect to the original trilogy, adding stuff with Sauron and making the ring more important, because that's what everybody expects when they think of The Hobbit, because it's the prequel to The Lord of the Rings. But here's the thing, The Hobbit is not the prequel to The Lord of the Rings. It's kind of its own story that just so happens to have some connecting tissue with the story that comes after. And I really struggle to consider this a Hobbit movie. As this trilogy stands, it's kind of just Lord of the Rings fan fiction. And a lot of you wanted me to watch that new Amazon show for this video, and I don't wanna. That's just more fan fiction. I have no interest, I'm sorry. I think I might be done with Lord of the Rings for a little bit. My childhood isn't exactly ruined, but I don't think it was improved very much either. So I'm gonna give this one a dumb out of 10. You know, every year I make these videos, and every year they put me in a bad mood. You guys want a ranking? You want me to rank all the movies? Fine. You ready for this? From worst to best. Number three, these two pieces of shit. They suck. Number two, this movie. It's fine. It didn't make me that mad. Number one, everything else. Just watch these. It's all you need. I'm done with prequels. Society has progressed past the need for prequels. I'm tired. Next December, we're doing all the Batman movies. Bye-bye. Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins is only three feet tall. When, when, hey. I read, when I read this upside down, of course, it spells Gucci. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, he was quite kind of kept me in check a little bit. No, and no, my boy, no, no. <laughs> yes, that was what they used to call me. Gandalf the Gay. <laughs> Oh, no. As soon as somebody gets remotely boring, it just freezes. So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Giant Easy Boy Recliner. That <laughs> That's a wonderful name for Orlando, Easy Boy Recliner. <laughs> I met for the first time the great Christopher Lee. You know. Then was the, ki the, the killer, quite uh, early on in the suit course, he turned to me and he said, I've always thought I should play Gandalf. <laughs> Oh, I just had to find a mirror, just take a quick look, glance, remind myself that I am, in fact, Orlando Bloom. Have you been having these reunions without me? No. I mean, yes. yes, they have. Of, the social distancing work for Schmeagel and I uh, got Gollum. Social distancing is for persons who likes to drink disinfectant precious. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I've got my glasses on. Oh, I'll oh, put yeah. your stacks on, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Put your stacks on. Yeah. I've got a battle. On the battlefield, <laughs> uh, let me just tilt this up a wee bit. 